Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day nine in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable to execute on your creative ideas with ease in this awesome application. Today, I wanna introduce you to the different mouse tools that you can use in the tracks area. And the mouse tools allow you to change your mouse's cursor into a variety of different tools that you can then use for different functions as you click around your projects. And the mouse tools can be viewed and accessed from these two drop-down menus right above the tracks area. Now on the left-hand side, we have the left click or primary tool. And on the right-hand side, we have a drop-down menu to select and specify a command click or secondary tool. And what this means is, is that you can set two different tools for your mouse and then flip between these two different tools on the fly just by holding the command key on your Mac's keyboard. So in this example, my left click tool is the pointer tool, which is really great for making selections, moving regions around and more. And then if I decide I need to split up this region using the scissors tool, I can hold the command key on my Mac's keyboard to flip between the pointer tool to the scissors tool and now split up this region. I'm gonna use key command, command Z to undo these steps. And first things first, right at the very top of the mouse tools, we have the pointer tool. Pointer tool provides a lot of crucial functionality. To start with, we can select different regions or events in our projects just by clicking on them with the pointer tool. You can also move regions or events by clicking and holding with your mouse and then dragging as you hold. And once you're ready to place that region where you want it, you select go. You can also move regions from one track to another by clicking and holding and dragging. And that's just the beginning. I mean, we can select multiple regions at a time by clicking, holding, and dragging from an empty area in the tracks area over all the regions we want to select. Or while holding shift on your Mac's keyboard, you can select each region or event that you want to include in the selection. And let's say that we accidentally selected one too many regions. While holding shift, we can click on one of those selected regions to then deselect that region. And from here, we can move both these regions, this audio region and MIDI region at the same time by clicking, holding, and dragging. And if we wanna copy a single region or multiple regions while holding option on your Mac's keyboard, you can click, hold, and then drag. And once you let go, your copies have been created. We can change the length of a region by hovering our mouse over the bottom left or right-hand corners. We get this bracket icon with the angled brackets. And if you click, hold, and drag, we can shorten this region so we only are playing back this selection. And we can lengthen regions as well. So you can see that I've hidden most of this performance, but thankfully Logic doesn't forget everything that came before or after, so we can reintroduce these parts if we want. And the same applies to software instruments. We can also adjust the boundaries of regions side by side by hovering our mouse about halfway down. We can then click, hold, and drag to adjust. And as long as nothing is directly next to a region, we can also loop a region by hovering our mouse about halfway down on the right-hand side. Click, hold, and drag. Loop that region for as long as you need it. I mean, that's a lot of functionality just for the pointer tool. I'm gonna undo once again. And let's now move on to the pencil tool. The pencil tool allows you to add new regions or events to your projects just by clicking on a track lane. So if we click with the pencil tool on the software instrument track, we create a brand new region. If we click on a drummer track, we create a new drummer region. Audio tracks are a little different. If we click with the pencil tool on the audio track, this brings up the import dialog. And basically we're telling Logic that we want to import an audio file from somewhere on our Mac or external drives into this project. So if we select perhaps that, click open. If 
we can see that this audio region has been imported into our project. Let's get rid of these two regions. I'm gonna switch my tool back to the pointer tool. Select these two regions, get rid of them by pressing delete on my Mac's keyboard. And if we open the editor for this empty MIDI region, you can see that there are actually mouse tools as well for many of the editors that you can specify for that editor. So we can leave our left click tool for the piano roll to the pointer tool and then specify the pencil tool as our command click tool. And now if you hold command while in the piano roll, we get the pencil tool and we can start plugging in notes for this electric piano. And what's a great tool with the pencil tool is if we use the pencil tool, click and hold, you can actually, while still holding, specify the length for that note on a per note basis. All right. Next up, we have the eraser tool, which is exactly how it sounds. If you hover your mouse over an event or a region, you can remove that region or event with the eraser tool. So let's undo. After that, we have the text tool. This allows you, and again, I'm using it as my command click tool, just so I can continue to keep my pointer tool as my left click tool. With the text tool, you can rename the regions in the tracks area. So if we decide just saying this is just electric bass, we can do that. I have to admit, it's a tool I never use, but maybe you will. And you can see it's kind of getting a little cumbersome constantly going up to this menu to switch the tool. So it's worth pointing out, if you press T on your Mac's keyboard, the mouse tool will pop up anywhere that your mouse is in the tracks area, the piano roll, and other editors. And from here, you can quickly switch your mouse tool to another tool without having to go back up to these menus each and every time. So we go to the scissors tool. Now hold command to specify the scissors tool as my command click tool. And a lot of folks really love the scissors tool because it allows you to split up regions as you see fit. In this case, I'm going to split up this electric base into two different regions, each two bars in length. So now we can treat this section separate from this one. But another reason a lot of people love the scissor tool is because if you hold option while using it, if we make this cut right here at bar two, we make equal cuts across the performance for this entire region. And now we split this region up into five different parts based on where I made the edit. So if we undo, hold option with the scissor tool, I'll split it right at bar two. All right, now we have four equal parts, each a bar long. Let's try it at about halfway between. All right, now we have eight different regions. And one more time. Look at that. Perfect. Pressing the T key once again. Working our way down, we have the glue tool, which allows you to combine regions or events together. So if we hold option and copy by clicking, holding, and dragging while holding option, we can combine these two regions together to keep things tidy by using the glue tool. I've selected these two regions. And if we now click with the glue tool, we've combined these two regions together. Let's do the same for drummer regions. Copy this and then select the two, use the glue tool. We can see they've been combined. We can see that there's also been some adjustments in the performance and that's because drummer regions, though we haven't covered them yet, are very much living documents. It's a virtual drummer that adapts based on where it is and what the part is and what else is going on in your projects. So combining these two regions results in drummer adapting its performance. And in the case of audio regions, let's bring back that scissors tool. Let's split maybe there, and there, and get rid of this region. If we now bring back the glue tool, select these two regions and glue them together, Look at that. Logic has actually brought back what originally was there between those two regions. If we wanted to actually make a distinct change to this region, let's undo. 
Let's move this one region about a B in. Now make that selection. Glue tool. And now Logic is letting us know that these are non-contiguous audio regions. So they're not directly next to each other. And because we've made this change a moving one, the resulting glued file will not be what was originally once there. So Logic has to create a new audio file. So if we create, Logic has now done a process that we call bouncing and it's bounced a new file with these changes. Interesting. We have the solo tool, which allows us to solo and listen to a region just by clicking on it. Then we have the mute tool, which does the opposite. We can mute different regions in our projects. So they are not heard. And you can unmute muted regions using that tool as well. From there, we have the zoom tool, which we covered in the last video. And this tool is one of the best tools in Logic Pro. It allows you to zoom in on sections of your project just by clicking, holding, and dragging with the zoom tool over a section. And when you want to back out, you just click with the zoom tool. The fade tool allows you to add a fade to any audio region. And fades are incredibly crucial when you start to make edits to your regions. So for example, if we undo these two fades, and if we adjust the boundary of this region, let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Did you catch that? There was this big pop at the end. And that's because I made a poor edit. I adjusted the boundary in the middle of the waveform. So a better edit would have been in between when we're crossing the zero crossing. But to further fine tune this edit so we don't get those pops, if we use the fade tool, and you can add a fade at the beginning of an audio region, at the end, and even in between two regions, which we call a crossfade. Anytime you make an edit to an audio file, it's always good practice to add a fade in and a fade out on every audio region just to be safe. That way you can be sure that all your edits are clean edits and you won't get those pops or clicks. We take a listen now. We don't get that pop. Let's hear it again. Bring back that fade. And I know it's very tiny. It's right at the end there. The pop is gone. Next up, we have the automation select tool. Automation will have its own video in this series, but just real quick, let's solo the SoCal drum kit and take a listen. And perhaps we want the drums to start out in audible and then increase in volume and then get quiet again. We can do this by going up to the show hide automation view, clicking, and then with the pointer tool, we can click on the automation lane and by default volume is the first automation lane. And we can add some automation nodes just by clicking on the line. And if we take a listen. We now have the volume adjusting over time for this drum performance. The automation select tool allows you to do exactly that. You select automation. It's kind of a weird tool. And if you hold shift, you can select multiple automation nodes. But check it out. Let me reduce the length of this drummer region. And I'm going to use key command, command R to duplicate or replicate this region. I'm going to make sure to copy the automation data. We'll do it one more time. And now if we show hide automation once again, and while using the select automation tool, if we click on the header of a region, we can select all the automation within the boundaries of that particular region. So then we can make an adjustment with our pointer tool or automation select tool if we wanted. All right, so now we've got this automation reading across our track. If we open up the mouse tools, 
we can move on to the automation curve tool. And this tool allows you to adjust the curve of your automation. So if we zoom in, check it out. If we click and hold on this automation and drag to the left, create a pretty interesting curve to the right, different curve. If we then drag up or down, we create a different ramping curve, right? Pretty interesting. Let's listen. Next tool we have is the marquee tool, personal favorite. It allows you to make selections in your projects. And then with the pointer tool, you can click on those selections to separate those regions. You can also use the marquee tool. If we click T, select the marquee tool as my command click tool. We can make a selection, a single selection without dragging across and then hit play to begin playback from that selection. Or click, hold and drag with the marquee tool, to play back just that selection from beginning to end. What's really great with the marquee tool, if we go back to the show height automation, you can actually make selections of automation with it. Click, and what looks like two nodes is actually four. So we can get really fine tuned real quick with our automation. Then we have the flex tool. Flex tool is great because you can actually change the timing of your audio performances and recordings. So we click and hold. Oh man, we're moving just that single note in this bass performance. Let's drag this one too. Take a listen to just this. Undo and solo. Pretty awesome. And lastly, for the tracks area, we have the gain tool. The gain tool is brand new to Logic Pro since 10.7.5. What it allows you to do is adjust the level of your individual regions without having to dig into automation. If we look in the region inspector, in the inspector, there's a gain parameter. And you can see it's being adjusted for these regions. So if we wanted this first region to be very quiet, and then the second region to be very loud, we sure could. All right, we did a really brisk run through through these different mouse tools. In tomorrow's video, I'm gonna show you how you can completely skip having to go to the mouse tool menu again and again and again every time you want a new tool. Instead, I'm gonna show you some global settings to enable and introduce you to a couple of key commands so you'll never have to visit these menus again if you don't want to. Thanks so much and I'll see you for more in this Newbie to Ninja series tomorrow. Take care.